Today is our last lesson in our Gideon CU series, and uh, I am glad to bring this to you live via a taped recording. Uh, that's awesome, right? Through the miracle of technology and Amu. Uh, I'm here to you to, with you today to just sort of wrap up our, our uh, CEO on Gideon. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to read you the final passage of Scripture in, in Gideon, or about Gideon's life from Judges 7. And, and then I'm just going to give you the thoughts that we have had throughout the, the weeks uh, with one question of reflection for each, each, of those, each of those lessons. So you don't have any fill-in-the-blank notes. You just have notes with the big overlying thoughts of each week and then a reflection question. And I hope that you will just sort of absorb what we're talking about today and maybe take those with you uh, for in your quiet time with the Lord to have some reflection about uh, this time we've had with Gideon. So let's pray, and we're going to get into the lesson today. God, we love you and we thank you for the gift of today. I pray, Lord, that uh, you will help us to take these lessons that you have given us through the life of Gideon and hopefully uh, use them uh, to be more productive in our faith and in our life with you and to steward well the gifts like today and every day that you give us. We love you and we thank you for that in your strong name. Amen. All right, so let's finish up the story of Gideon, and uh, we'll, we'll read verses 19 through 22 of Judges 7. So Gideon and the hundred men that were with him, um, and we learned last week that the 300 were divided up into to three different uh, groups, uh, and Gideon was leading a hundred of them, uh, reached the edge of the camp at the beginning of the middle of the watch just after they had changed the guard. They blew their trumpets and broke the jars that were in their hands. The three companies blew the trumpets and smashed the jars, grasping the torches in their left hands and holding in their right hands the trumpets they were to blow. They shouted, a sword for the Lord and for Gideon. While each man held his position around the camp, all the Midianites ran, crying out as they fled. And when, 300, when the 300 trumpets sounded, the Lord caused the men throughout the camp to turn on each other with their swords. So we see in the conclusion of this story that God did bring a tremendous victory uh, to Gideon and the Israelites that day. Um, and, and it's amazing just to sort of see the journey that Gideon was on from the time the Lord called him to the time this victory had, had come. So let's look back at the story of Gideon. Again, I will just give you the one big thought from each lesson and then one reflection question uh, for you today. So the first, first lesson that we had on Gideon, we learned that God will use tough times to get our attention. Now, none of us enjoy this, right? We, we really enjoy the times in life where everything is going well, where it doesn't seem the problems are flourishing in our life, but God uses the tough times to get our attention and perhaps even grow us the most. The challenge for us is, is so many times when hard times come, we begin to ask ourselves the question, right? Is this the devil fighting against us? Uh, is this God trying to show us something uh, or punishing us even? Or is this life just happening uh, to us? Uh, and the short answer to those three questions is yes, yes, and yes. All three of those things can be can be happening, and we sort of learn throughout the story of Gideon. That's why it's so important for us to say, stay sensitive to the Holy Spirit, so we can know how the Lord is at work. Uh, if it is the devil attacking, we need to be able to stand our ground against that. If it is the Lord trying to teach us something, we need to figure out how we can open up our spirit to receive whatever the message is the Lord is trying to bring us. And if it is life just happening to us, we have to know in those moments, how do we stand in faith and how do we let the peace of God rule in our hearts and our lives as life is just happening 
all around us. C.S. Lewis says, God whispers in our pleasures, speaks in our conscious, conscience, but shouts in our pains. Uh, pain is his megaphone to rouse a deaf world. So God uses tough times to get our attention. So here's my question to you today. Um, is he getting your attention today? Is God getting your attention? Um, because if you look around you and you're saying, I don't feel that God is speaking. I don't feel that God has shown up in my life or in my problem. You, you might be at a place where you need to, you need to, uh, quiet yourself before the Lord and, and, and realize, uh, God is moving in some way. How is he moving and how is he trying to get my attention? Maybe it's something that you have just, uh, felt like the devil is fighting against you. Uh, and, and you've just been blaming the devil, blaming the devil. Well, instead of doing that, look up to God. God, what are you trying to show me through this? Maybe life is happening around you and you're just getting so mad and so frustrated. But rather than getting mad and frustrating at your, uh, mad and frustrated at your circumstances, begin to ask that question. God, what are you trying to do in me? Uh, through this through this set of circumstances. Uh, the second thought is this. Um, uh, God always sees more than we do. Um, and, and in case we were wondering, does God have a sense of humor? Remember when we find Gideon at first, he's, uh, he is, he is hanging out on a threshing floor in, um, uh, inside of, a, in, or he's threshing wheat inside of a building, uh, an activity that would have normally been done outside. So he's in fear. Uh, and yet God sees him even when he is in that, that place of, of fear. Um, and not only does he see him in that place of fear, but he calls out to him uh, as a mighty warrior. Now, Gideon wasn't seeing himself as a mighty warrior, but God called that out in Gideon, even when Gideon was positioned in a place of fear, and we could even say anxiety uh, about what was going on around him. So the reflection question that I want you to ask concerning this is, do you see yourself as God does? Do you see yourself as God does? God called out upon Gideon, I am with you, mighty warrior. Uh, do you see yourself as the Lord does? Remember, you are his workmanship created in his image. And if you constantly look at yourself and see yourself as a failure, uh, see yourself as less than, see yourself that'll never be able to match up, or maybe you feel because of past failures, you can never go and maybe reclaim the calling that was once upon your life. God sees you as a mighty warrior. Uh, and it is time that we begin to see ourselves in that in that same light. So do you see yourself uh, as he does? Uh, here's the third thought from our lessons that God confirms his priorities or his calling in our life with his with his presence. Remember, not only did he say um, you're a mighty warrior, but he said, I am with you, mighty warrior. I am with you. And, and, and God repeats that several times throughout the story that I am with you, Gideon. I am with you. Uh, remember one of the, the quotes I gave you from Napoleon's soldiers was that, that they said of Napoleon, when he takes our hand and looks at us, we feel like we are conquerors. We feel like we are conquerors. I think that's what happens to us when we experience the presence of God in our life. No matter how hard the situation is, we know that if his presence is with us, there is no challenge that we cannot overcome. Um, in fact, I love that song that says, this is how I fight my battles, right? This is how I fight my battles. It might look like I'm surrounded but it really, I'm surrounded by you. Uh, and today you might be in that place where it feels like you're surrounded by tough times. You're surrounded by negative circumstances. You're surrounded by a lot of stuff that just doesn't seem to make sense in your life. Remember, most of all, you're surrounded by God. 
You're surrounded by him. Uh, and so don't forget that his presence in your life will bring strength to you. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. And in his presence is where we find that fullness of joy. So the reflection question for you is, can you sense his presence with you now? Can you sense his presence with you now? And if you do not feel the presence of God in, his, in your life, I can assure you it's not because he has left you. It's perhaps that you have gotten so busy in life or so distracted that your filter for seeing and feeling his presence right now is, is not activated to the level that it should be. Uh, so draw close to him and I promise you, you will feel what James says, him drawing close to you. Uh, the, the fourth thought is uh, private faithfulness uh, is a prerequisite to God's public usefulness or our public usefulness in life. Uh, remember, before Gideon could be used publicly to fight an enemy without, he first had to, to fight privately an enemy within. And remember, his people had all these idols built up. They had, uh, man, they were, they were worshiping uh, at the Asherah poles and they were, uh, it, it was truly just idol worship. These were the people of God. And God said before, I'm going to be used to destroy the Midianites, your enemies. You first have to destroy these things that you have put before me. You need to do that in private before I'm going to bring you public victory on the battlefield. And even though it was hard, uh, Gideon, Gideon did this. And it stirred things up even with his own people. And anytime we go to address those, those private issues in our life, It'll stir things up. Remember the, that the Gideon's own people said, who did this? Who tore down these idols? Let us find them and we're going to kill them, right? And, and that's sometimes how you'll feel when you begin to fight those private battles. It'll feel like sometimes, is this worth it? I mean, sometimes those private battles means you have friends you have to disconnect with. You have relationships that you have to sever in your life. Are there activities that you've been involved in that, that you begin to, you have to let go of? And those aren't easy things. And sometimes you'll get some blowback from that. Uh, but private faithfulness is a prerequisite for public usefulness. So here's your question with that. Are there things in your life that you need to let go of so God can move in power? inside of you. What are those things? I, I believe this is one that all of us have, have areas that we can address in our life. What are those things? What are those things that need to be dealt with privately in your life so God can use you publicly? Um, all right, here's, here's your next one. Uh, and it sort of goes right in line with that, right? Because if we want to be used publicly, we've got to handle those things privately. Then we can understand that our success that will follow that is determined by God's power and not ours. Uh, remember, it's greater is he that is in us. Not greater are we than he that is in the world. It's greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. I love the scripture in 2 Chronicles 16, 9 that says the eyes of the Lord, the eyes of the Lord uh, run to and fro throughout the earth, uh, seeking out someone through whom he can show himself strong. I love that. Now, that's the New King James Version. Other versions put it differently, but I love the words there. God is looking for someone through whom he can show himself strong. Like, I believe God is just looking to flex his muscles on behalf of you today. I, I think of a lot of great movie scenes where someone will be bullying uh, someone in, in some circumstance, right? And, and, and they'll be trying to pick a fight. Well, then all of a sudden, someone at that table will stand up and it's this huge guy that's so much taller, so much bigger, so many more muscles. And that person that was picking on him all of a sudden realizes, wait a minute, maybe I shouldn't have tried to pick a fight with this guy, right? He's a lot bigger than I thought. Here's, here's what I know. Uh, Second Chronicles is telling us God is just waiting. He is just waiting for someone 
whom he can stand up from that table when our enemy comes in like a flood, when our enemy fights against us, who he can stand up and show himself strong on their behalf. God is wanting to flex for you. Like God is, God is wanting to show himself strong on your behalf. So the question I have for you is this, will you trust him today? It's so easy to trust in our own might in our own power, even though we know it's insufficient, we still find ourselves gravitating toward trusting in ourself. Will you trust him today to be the strength and your power for you? And then lastly, in the lesson we, we got last week um, was this, that fear, um, fear is not the opposite of faith. Uh, fear is not the opposite of faith. Fear is faith in the wrong things. All right. So, so remember at the end of this story, God, God said to, to Gideon, Hey, Gideon, if you're still afraid, take your servant and go down and listen to what the Midianites were saying. Even after God showed up through an angel and said, Hey, mighty warrior, I'm with you. Even, th- even after God uh, granted Gideon's request when he laid this fleece of wool out on the floor and made it wet, then in a- another scenario, made it dry. Even when God did all that for Gideon, even when God protected Gideon after he destroyed those idols, Gideon was still afraid. And God said, Gideon, if you're still afraid, take your servant and go listen to what the Midianites are saying. See, faith, many would say faith is, is the opposite of, of fear, but it's, it's, really, it's really not. Because fear is faith. It's just faith in the wrong things. Fear is faith in the what ifs rather than in God. Um, fear is faith in things like, well, what if the economy goes bad? It's this, it's this faith in a hypothetical. What if I get sick? Fear is faith that something like that will will happen to you. uh, Fear is is, uh, this faith in the idea, what if I never get married or there's someone that, there's not someone out there for me or what if, what if I lose my job? What if a loved one has some tragic accident? Fear is just faith in all of those what ifs. And that's not where our faith belongs. Our faith belongs in our God who has shown himself faithful over and over and over again. So my discussion or my reflection question for you is, where is your faith today? Where is your faith? Second Timothy reminds us, God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So put your faith in him because you will always find he is trustworthy and he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. And he is worthy of our trust and our faith. He's never lost a battle and he's not going to start. He's not going to start in your life. So I hope you've enjoyed our time in Gideon and I hope you'll take these reflection questions and just do some personal inventory in your life. I think it'll help you. I think it'll grow you in your, in your faith and in your love for Jesus. So let me pray with you as you, as you uh, take on that, um, uh, those, those questions in your private time with the Lord. God, we love you. And we thank you so much for challenging our hearts through Gideon. I pray, Lord, for each one today as they take these reflection questions and we'll use them in different ways in their private time with you or in some other way. I just ask, Lord, that you will help to grow us through them. We thank you uh, for, for showing us an imperfect faith journey of someone like Gideon to know that we can fully trust you even when the odds are against us. We love you and thank you for it in your name. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a great Christmas break.